Hello. I recently finished uh, relighting my entire basement workshop and storage area, and I just thought I'd share a few things that I learned or experienced in the course of doing this in case it would help somebody else. This is my little currently overcrowded workbench, um, <clears throat> but it used to have just a couple of fluorescent bulbs hanging above it, and now into the suspended ceiling I've got three fixtures for a much better lighting and uh, <clears throat> two of them are ones I repurposed from elsewhere and uh, these are traditional 2x2 two two troffers as they're sometimes called uh, which fit into the suspended ceiling frame and these particular ones use two of the U-bent uh, T12 style fluorescent bulbs. Uh, you could also get these troffers with uh, two or four of the two foot long straight fluorescent bulbs. Now I re-ballasted these with electronic ballasts and put in a cooler white bulb so that the color of lighting was less yellow. Uh, and that's fine. I mostly did that because the way the suspended ceiling is set up here it was such a pain to get these up there originally I had to take a big part of the frame apart I didn't want to do that again so I just refurbished the fixtures instead of uh, replacing them but then over here and it doesn't look that much different I've got um, this newer style here. It's also a 2x2 two two troffer, but it comes already from the factory with LED strips in it in a cool white, and it matches the uh, color of the adjacent fluorescence pretty well. So I'm pretty pleased with that. It gives out about the same amount of light cussing and swearing here. Uh, see if I can get it to expose right. This is a uh, Lithonia brand which is Home Depot's lighting brand as far as I know. And the fixtures are okay but they're a little bit flimsy and if I don't get the uh, fixture aligned exactly right these little latches don't want to go in there but anyway by and large it's working out pretty well. I'm getting good light out of these. Bench area is lit up nicely. And over here, over my table saw, I've got another one of these 2x2 two two, uh, LED troffers. And then over here, over the metal lathe, is another one. Now going over to the other side of the shop, and I apologize for all the gurgling around here. It's raining heavily outside and the sump is going quite a lot. Uh, I used to only have a few fluorescent fixtures here. And now I've got this whole bank of LED fixtures running from one end of the basement to the other, primarily over the wood shop area. And uh, just to give one example here, I have to put the camera down for a second. There is with the diffuser pulled out. And you can see I've got two fixtures in here, each with two four-foot bulbs. And these are LED types. The uh, fixture is a Lithonia brand, also from Home Depot. The fixtures, I think, are about $20 each. They're not the greatest, but they're perfectly adequate for this task. Um, I've got them all mounted uh, let's see if I can get the camera up here. Luckily the ceiling is kind of low. You can see up here I've got just a angle bracket screwed into the fixture. I did use washers on the uh, inside of the fixture so because of the thin metal and then uh, deck screws into the uh, floor joists above since the ceiling is low there's very little clearance between the floor joists and the suspended ceiling frame. <clears throat> just really just barely enough to fit these fixtures up there. And this um, method is easy and it holds them nice and firm. And I've got them wired in with some 
MC style armored cable. Um, now the a word about the the fixture and the lamp compatibility. Um, originally, several years ago actually, I had outfitted one of the fixtures in the basement with what was apparently the first or one of the first LED replacements for a, a, a T12 fluorescent bulb and this was from Earth LED. They were the first people I found who carried them. And you can see in here it's really just a couple, well a few hundred bright white individual LEDs on a circuit board. Not the most efficient way to do it and I think these bulbs cost nearly a hundred dollars each. Uh, they, to make it worse, they also required that the fixture be rewired to remove the ballast and just hook up one pin on one end to AC hot and one pin on the other to AC neutral and uh, that rendered the, so the fixtures incompatible with normal fluorescent bulbs if I'd wanted to put one back in here. But nevertheless, these worked for years and uh, didn't show any signs of failing so I was quite convinced that the LEDs would be fine if I just got some newer ones. So then I found this uh, Philips brand of light. This is uh, what Philips calls their instant fit and it's a T8 diameter bulb so it's only one inch in diameter like the smaller bulbs and my impression and my understanding is that the older T12 style bulbs are basically done uh, and the stores are selling them out. They're going to be unavailable shortly, just like the old incandescent bulbs. And uh, apparently the T8s are still going to be available for quite a while, but I didn't want to go through another cycle of obsolescence, so I wanted to go with LEDs right away. And this instant fit type is one of those on the market that would purportedly work with an existing fixture with great compatibility as long as the fixture was electronic and perhaps even in some cases with a inductive uh, a ballast but certainly with an electronic ballast and the Philips website has uh, quite an extensive table of known compatible ballasts um, but anyway I selected the cool white once again because it's my shop I think the cool white even though it's a slightly harsher light color I think it's better for painting and so on because it's closer to true white and I think shows colors more accurately, especially for painting and doing things like that. Uh, so this, these Philips bulbs are uh, actually consuming 17 watts each. They replace a 32 watt bulb. They're usual 48 inches or 4 foot types. They are a 2100 lumen bulb and the color is 4000 Kelvin which again is classed as a cool white. They do recommend that you review the ballast compatibility list before you buy the bulbs and use them and here's the uh, website philips.com slash instant fit and once again these don't require any rewiring as long as you've got a, a compatible ballast in the fixture. Now the uh, These Lithonia fixtures I have, I really am doubtful that you could get a uh, T12 in here because there's so little clearance. So I think they must have changed their specifications or something. And Home Depot's numbering system is garbage. It's confusing beyond all measure and they've got about five different part numbers for everything. Drives you nuts. I wish they'd clean that up. But anyway, I don't think there's room for a larger bulb in here. I think these fixtures are designed for T8s so if you go shopping for something just be careful that you get something that's right. Um, and the ballast that was in these uh, was something that was listed as compatible with the Philips bulb or you know Philips so the bulbs are compatible with this ballast so no worries there. So no wiring just hooking up the AC power and the ground to each fixture and uh, now I'm not giving out a specific uh, Lithonia lighting uh, part number or a Home Depot part number 
but while these fixtures are adequate, um, a lot of these less expensive fixtures like you'd get from a big box store, not an electrical supply house, uh, the sheet metal does tend to be kind of thin and I found that they work pretty well but they definitely need to be bolted rigidly to something even more rigid than they are like in this case floor joists and uh, if anybody's got similar fixtures they have a spring clip that's supposed to go in here I did not find that would work and I was having these covers on the fixtures dropping off on my head all the time after I thought they were secured so I would definitely recommend putting in like a sheet metal self-tapping screw or something like you might use for duct work. I just use what I had on hand and put it through there so that the cover can't fall off. Anyway, so you end up with uh, a bunch of fixtures all wired up. Job's pretty easy, although I found it to be time consuming. And you get these nice hot spots which you really want to have a diffuser on it. I think if you're just in a garage or something, maybe not. Anyway, so these uh, diffusers, which in real life look a lot more diffused than the camera makes them out to look. The camera shutters down for these and makes the bulbs seem very apparent, but to the regular human eye, these look like pretty nicely diffused rectangular panels. And of course, one thing you're left with is a bunch of ceiling panels to be cut up and disposed of later. And probably if you did what I did, you have a bunch of fluorescent bulbs that need to be disposed of too. That these days everybody charges you to take them off your hands. And there's one other thing that I uh, found was um, there were a number of nooks and crannies where I couldn't fit a trough or anything, so I just put in some LED 100 watt bulbs in ceiling can fixtures. And that worked out pretty well for getting light in those hard to reach spots. You know, one more word on these Philips bulbs. And I can't speak for anybody else who might make a similar product. I haven't seen anybody else, but probably somebody has a comparable product. Um, these are instant on. There is no time to wait for them to get brighter or shift their color. They're just bang and they're ready. And uh, they're not expensive anymore. I seem to recall these were, I was buying these by the carton of 10, um, total of 40 bulbs I installed. Well, I bought 40 and <clears throat> I installed four short of that because I have four spares. But uh, I think they were less than $10 a bulb, which is certainly more than a fluorescent bulb, but not that much. Uh, and considering these should last, I think they're supposed to last like 50,000 hours or something. Uh, and they use a fraction of the electricity and there's no uh, toxic materials in these. It's, uh, I think, a good way to go and pretty easy for the homeowner to do on their own as long as they have a bit of basic information. Hope this is helpful.